Welcome back to Down of the Frame. It's been a minute. Today we're not doing anything crazy, but we will be installing a new oven. The reason for installing a new oven, well, this one's gas. We do not have a vented hood range. And while we could install it, I wanna eventually convert the house to all electric. So our goal today is to disconnect the gas, make sure it's safe. As you can see, this gas line's kinda, it's real janky. It's like crimped down here, it shouldn't be. It's just, it's a mess. So I have the gas shut off. We turn this, the, uh, one of the burners on to burn off any extra propane in there. We'll disconnect that and cap it. And then we're gonna be using a surface mounted 240 volt, 50 amp receptacle, which I have right here, this guy. And then we have $230 worth of wire. <laughs> this is 6-3. Now there's actually four wires in there, if you can see. You have your, your black, red, and your white. So you have your, your neutral and your two hots, and then there's also a ground in there. If you have an older stove or an older house that has an electric stove and it only has three prongs, I recommend getting or replacing the breaker with a GFCI, a ground fault protected breaker. If your oven somehow does become energized, meaning the housing becomes energized, it'll shut the circuit off. Without further ado, guys, let's get down the frame. Right. What do you think, Calvin? Can you get an adjustable wrench so we can unscrew this you thing? You want an adjustable wrench? Yeah. Okay. That's, there's the tools. Oh boy. Everything you need right in there. <laughs> the electrician set. Definitely don't approach this if you haven't worked with any sort of electrical systems before. I'm gonna try to cover every detail that I can. If you're not confident, hire an electrician. Is it disconnected? She was fucking on there. Oh yeah. Eventually this Temporary. copper line is gonna be coming out. So what you should get is somebody who's licensed in gas to bring over uh, a cap and shut this off for you because obviously you don't want this leaking. And if it's a situation like mine where it's very old and ugly, then it might be a safe idea to call uh, a plumber. But this is gonna be okay for us. I'll put some pipe dope on it and make sure it's sealed. Next step is to get this thing out of the way, find out where we wanna drill our hole. We might have to bring you out back, Sweet Peach. Come on. Let's get rid of these. Yeah, those are loose. Loosey gooses. I was gonna say, probably just put them in there, huh? Oh, look at all that carbon. That's what you're breathing in. Yep. Yep. All right. Watch your fingies then. Mm -hmm. So we got this for a cord. It's a six foot 50 amp four prong range power cord. It's a thick one. Jonah's gonna be installing this, but the reason why we're doing 50 amp is not actually because this is a 50 amp oven, but it's actually because I don't wanna ever have to run more wire, <laughs> basically. So we're doing everything in 50 amps and then we're limiting the power at the breaker to 40 amps. So the breaker itself will trip at 40 amps and the rest of the system will be rated to 50 amps. Here you go. I know, socket. That's got all the sockets you'll ever need. Oh my God, this thing's sick. <laughs> Look at this thing. Yeah, Klein, baby. Look at that, that's so cool. I have to get these ones too on the side. Oh, look at that. I didn't even see those. Oh, it's magnetic tool. Oh my god. Oh yeah. It's all see, the best. Listen, electricians get made fun of all the time, but you guys have the coolest tools. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Stop oh. holding on to me. So we're looking at the wires here. We have our two phases, the red and the black as well as a neutral in there. And then our ground is gonna be landed. Can we identify where the ground is? Oh, right ground there. screw right there. So the important thing to note about this ground screw is that you wanna remove that copper strap. That's actually bonding it to the neutral. That is only for ovens that don't have a ground wire going back to the panel. It's actually a code violation in the US, so take that out. It's color for color is what we call it in the, the trades. So we're just gonna land the red on the red, the white on the white and the black on the black, and then the green goes to ground. And this uh, this HDX kit actually comes with this interesting little connector already on there. So you'll just have to unscrew this and uh, slide the wire up, drop this down into it through here and slide the wire up through. That's on, man. Now, Jonah, you're missing a critical step here, bud. What? You need to put the connector in first. Oh, mother but budger. If you no, want. I'm just gonna do it, yeah. I'm literally just gonna undo them all. Cut, cut the video. <laughs> cut the video. <laughs> this is my
Eager Beaver fucking energy. That's what it is. Dude, any new tradesperson has the Eager Beaver. It's bad. And then just do this? I thought I would do this. Let's Let's do that. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> These can go in here. You just go. Boop. Nice, and Jonah. You can... Using your brain, your noodle. What a weird connector. I've never used these weird. before. But you have to like push this up a little bit so it gets the sheath still. Mm -hmm. So that connector was a little interesting. Yeah, I know. Sometimes the gloves are. Uh, gloves come off. Now it's personal. Now it's personal. They these connectors like flip up. They kind of flip up into the hole, versus like a uh, a threaded lock nut situation. It's weird. Like I've wired so many giant industrial things. And yeah, like and this house oven's like, oh, hold on, I got a learning curve. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, back, back to the, back to the apprentice, car. apprentice learning. Yeah. So yeah, you see how Jonah's struggling to like get low enough. You can take this whole plate off, and then put the connector in and make up that whole thing, and then reconnect it with these screws here. That way, you don't have to be doing this, but it's okay. Dude, I love this thing. See, right. electricians have the coolest tools. <laughs> All ratchet and screwdriver. Time. Look at that. Look at that beautiful. They all kind of curl the same way. Well done, Jonah. All right, let's put the cap back on that. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we now have our 240 volt, 50 amp cord attached to our oven. This does not, I mean, you can buy it. We got this through Best Buy, but uh, they sell a cord. However, I like to choose my own cords. I think the HDX ones are a little better quality. Uh, and make sure it's a four wire or a three wire if your house is already has a receptacle in it but if you're doing new if you're doing a new house you do four wire now it's time to lay out where we're going to put our receptacle these ovens are designed so that they have this sort of recessed back to them so they can accommodate surface mounted receptacles and not ha cause any issues our receptacle is going to sit on the floor and because of where the cord is, which is dead center, we'll probably offset the receptacle to either the right or the left, depending on where the where you find a stud in the floor or a joist in the floor. So what we're gonna do here is, obviously we wanna land within this indentation behind here. So I'm gonna figure out that from this edge, which is gonna be our cabinet side, looks like eight inches will get us right in here, or maybe even seven inches. So that it gives us enough room to curl this cord up over, kind of like that. So I'm thinking we're gonna do it seven inches from the cabinet to the right side of our receptacle. We want the stove to be flush up against this. There's a little bit of a lip here, so we need to keep that in mind. Probably add a half inch for that. So our receptacle ideally is gonna sit like this. Now, you guys probably can't see that on the camera, but there's a bit of a hump right here the floor kind of goes like that. So I'm assuming there's probably a, a floor joist right here. Yeah. So what we're going to try to do is put a hole right there. Hi, sweet peach. And we're going to mark right there where the trim is. And we'll cut the trim. That way it sits flush and we can mount it to the wall. And how we're going to do that <laughs> is with our trusty multi-tool with a wood blade. A couple things to keep in mind when looking for a receptacle like this, whoops, dropped the screw, uh, is you're gonna wanna make sure it's UL listed. On the packaging, you'll see uh, UL listed. That means that it is listed for use in this application in the United States. It actually came with a connector right in here, so we got the connector, you don't have to go and buy it. And what we're gonna do is, is knock out the center concentric ring right here. And we're gonna trace it on the floor just so that we can see if there is a joist in our way or not. So the way you can remove these is typically for electricians, we'll put this in there and just pop that like that, take our linesman's and wiggle it off. Put this on the floor where we marked it out, mark it out on the floor, and that's where we're gonna drill our hole. So you can either use uh, impact or just a drill and this is a one inch spade bit. Should be the perfect size. We're gonna use a little duct seal to seal this up at the end so that no air gets through because it is an unconditioned crawl space. It's definitely something to keep in mind. I was gonna drill a pilot hole. <laughs> Hold on, let me get a smaller bit. 
seven thirty seconds is small enough to figure out. Large enough and small enough to figure out if there's a joist here. Oh, you know what? Gotta think this through. We should cut this trim out. Push it back. Remark. See you guys. All these steps you have to think of. So now, this will change where the hole lands, doesn't it, huh? <laughs> like a half an inch almost. <laughs> yeah. A good bit. So now that we got that trim cut out, remark our hole here. Kind of find the center line. A couple signs that made me think that we did not hit a stud. One, the bit fell through. And two, it pulled insulation up. So it's a pretty safe bet that there's not at least in the center of that hole, any joist. Probing. Oh yeah, nothing down there. Excellent. Things are going swimmingly right now. It usually doesn't. <laughs> Hopefully this connector will fit in here with the wings and everything. If not, we do have the multi-tool that we can widen up the hole uh, to get those wings in there. That's the gist of it. That's gonna get mounted right there. I think we are gonna have to open up the sides a little bit though. All right guys, we have hole number one, which is that hole going from one of our panels. The panel above, the big one, that's gonna be a new sub panel. A whole nother video, stay tuned for that. But it's going to the small one for now. Hole number two, where our receptacle is gonna be, uh, that's already drilled. We're gonna have to secure the wire all the way underneath me into that panel. The way we're securing it is with these mounting cable ties. They're just gonna screw to the joist that we have down there with these one inch screws and secure the wire, obviously. That's to code. We're gonna do it probably every foot just to make sure it's nice and tied up in there. Probably gonna have to remove some insulation and crawl through some dirt, but hey, that's the price you pay for new stuff, right? All right, let's, uh, let's pack up and get downstairs. See that thing dancing around? He doesn't pay rent. We might have to snake this one, boys. As you can see, everything in this house was done 100% to code. I don't know how I'm going to get to that thing, dude. Whew! I think we might have to snake it. Oh, that's a 100% snake job. I, there's not enough clearance. It's like, I can't crawl up there. All right, well, if we're snaking it, the least I can do is drill a hole through that bracing right there for a, a little bit of support, and then we'll come through here support as much as we can. That's the thing with these older houses is that, you know, you can only support within what's reasonable. You know, you can't, can't support where you can't reach. We're gonna drill a hole in the center of the joist or the uh, blocking. This is where you might have to stay down here, Jonah. Yeah. And I'll try to get the snake to you. I got it. I got it. Here we go. Took a while for it to pop out. This is the one I want. Yeah, there she is. All right, it's good. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is probably feed the wire through that hole, back down, make a head, and then pull it up. Land the fire. We got this at Lowe's. I'd recommend probably getting it from uh, electrical supply house. It's probably cheaper. Make this. A little bit easier on ourselves. We're just gonna unspool this whole thing. That's a thick piece of wood. Jonah, could you go up and pull the snake back a little bit? We'll do. Oh, it's the wrong. Yeah, our own joist bay, it's this one. Oh, there's no room, it's set. It's dirt right here. We're gonna do this an easier way. All right, so, I guess we can take, I'd like, I'd like to take the smaller of them. So I think the ground is gonna be the smallest. I'm gonna fold it back to make a hook. Hook this onto here. Could use my lines lens right now. I forgot to bring my pouch down, but. Now I might pay more attention to this if I'm doing a really far run. This isn't that far of a run, but I would 
try to make the head as small as you can and as streamlined as you can because doing long runs you're going to have more things that you end up running into and twist it at the end you have a little buddy tab so that you can go back and un untwist this mess later. All right, Jonah, do you want to go up top of the camera and start pulling the snake back? I'll do. I'll do this. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, keep wiggling it. Here, I'm going to go feed it a little bit more. Oh, I got it. You got it? Nice, Jonah. It's like a professional. You just gotta lift with your back in a twisting, jerking motion. Yes, <laughs> Chloe. Well, she took some casualties. That's <laughs> quite all right. I think we have plenty of extra wire. So what we'll do is we'll take a break from being down there, take our masks off, and we're gonna wire this and secure it, and then we'll finish snaking the rest of the wire. That, that way we don't worry about it getting pulled down into the basement. Yeah. Find the anchors. I don't know. They're in my hack out. Should have. Uh -huh. should have that. All right, so mark your mounting holes before you get all jazzy with that. Yeah, that's where I was gonna. You might not even need drywall anchors. Is it low enough? It might hit the stud. So, are you gonna use these bottom boys here, or are you just gonna use these top boys? I'm assuming you want to use the bottom boys too. Well, I'd like to use these two top and maybe the two bottom. Oh, okay, I didn't do the two top. My dad would be like, "This ain't a Dixon Ticonderoga." <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Get back in there. <laughs> We're gonna make sure this thing does not move. All right, so we just drilled the pre-holes for our drywall anchors. We're gonna hammer those in with our hammer. Oh, we need the connector on it, so that's gonna be the interesting part. <laughs> this is actually the same connector as you used over there, right? Mm -hmm. Same yeah. style. So I'm thinking that you put the connector on like that. There's two screws, one right here, and one right here that you put in. It's very interesting though. These connectors are not what I'm used to. They're not the industrial type, they're the rural type. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I would have rather a connector that went through with a lock nut. It goes like right through and has threads and you put a lock nut on it, but whatever. I guess we use this for future reference. I might, you know, pick up some other ones, but. But the problem is you're yeah. not going to be able to go through the floor very easily now. Yeah, you won't. So that's where things are going to get interesting here. The holes are <laughs> not going to line up perfectly. Well, we can put new anchors in, I guess. You just drill pilot holes with the drill bit, and that'll be enough room for that thing to slide in through the, to the hole. Yeah. You don't even have to go far. You just have to go, like, a quarter inch. There are three different types of screws on here. You have your ground, very obvious. It's green. You have a silver, that's actually gonna be your neutral, and then your coppers are usually always your hots. So you're gonna land your black and your red, doesn't matter which order, and then your green or unguarded ground, and then your white, which is your neutral. Now to strip these, I like to use my Milwaukee Multi and take this rounded edge here, probably gonna want something like that. And you just rotate that, not too hard, just enough to score the insulation, and then you can kind of pull it up off. All right, so we're gonna peel our hots back, size up our ground, which right there is probably good. Basically, we want it to sit just completely into that channel. Just like that. Because that, as you can see, if you follow the copper to this prong, this is gonna be your ground prong. So you wanna make sure that copper is in there and touching. Now we can do our phase conductors. Perfect, so you can see that that conductor is not near the pins here where the pin of the plug's gonna go. You don't want it to interfere with that. Tighten that as much as your gorilla strength can. All 
Okay. You're too good for your home? <laughs> You can go home, Jonah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you just did the thing you said not to. Yeah. All right, guys. So after Jonah left, I decided to continue the fight. I had to undo the entire receptacle, cut the wire, and redo everything, which took a couple hours. <laughs> and then uh, I mounted it on the wall. After that, I was able to put the cover on. It fits perfectly. Then I decided to put a little duct seal on the hole just to air seal because it's a crawl space below the kitchen and uh, we don't want any of that nasty air getting up in there. And uh, once I made sure that was sealed, it was time to begin running the wire to the panel. So I was marking out my holes on my floor joists, try to keep those all nice and lined up. I went with a one inch spade bit and I just drilled through the floor joists with that. Once I got those holes all drilled through, I was able to snake the wire through there and uh, each one of those holes it counts as a support. Uh, you should be supporting probably every three feet or so with a wire type like this. All right, there you go. So I'm just talking about how I wired, uh, brought the wire through that little blocking piece there. I have to put a little secure point there, but the rest of it's secure and it's upstairs in by the panel. As you can see, lots of extra and we just have to get that into the panel and I'll have to de-energize that panel, get it up in there uh, I actually have to find a couple spare circuits here, and I'm just kind of talking about how I need a 40 amp two pole breaker. As you can see, I already have the connector on there. I find it a little bit easier to put the connector on there, strip it, shove it up into the panel, put the lock nut on there. All right, all the power's killed to the panel. If you guys haven't seen my 200 amp service upgrade, you, you would have seen that I have put a disconnect outside so I can completely de-energize this panel and not work in near anything live, so I'm safe. Just tapping the lock nut on there, making sure the wire is secure. Moving some uh, wires. This panel is a mess. Uh, it's not going to be like that forever. We're going to eventually swap over to the panel to the left of me. Make sure those wires are stripped just enough to land under those terminals and no extra coppers sticking out past those terminals. Land the two hots, the neutral, and your ground. All right, power's back on. Time to test it. Took my multimeter, I tested face to ground, I'm getting 120, face to neutral, 120, face to face, 240. So this oven has perfect voltage, plug it in, push it into uh, its slot, take off all the plastic, and we're done. All right guys, so it's been about a month since we installed the oven and the receptacle to it, and I gotta say, I love it. As far as it being an electric oven, it boils water super fast, uh, much better than gas. We don't have that propane smell when we start it up, so that's really good. And honestly, the only issue I had, which wasn't even really an issue, I think it actually made the performance of the oven better, is I went with a larger gauge wire than I needed to. You can do a, a number six aluminum, and that should get you your 40 amps, and that way you don't have to spend $230 on copper wiring like I did. I went with number six copper, which is actually, I think, good for uh, almost, I think, 60 amps, something like that, even beyond what we wired, which was 50 amps. So it was definitely a little bit more than it needed to be, but that's okay. Um, I would love to make a video about aluminum versus copper and maybe swap it out on this and see if it boils water faster or slower. Let me know if you wanna see a video like that. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys next time on Down on the Frame.